Let's talk about keyboards. This kind and this kind. Piano keyboards are meant for chords and combinations where the number of sounds you can play far exceeds the number of keys. Computer keyboards, on the other hand, use a one-to-one -one mapping where each key means one thing and, with a few exceptions, you can't play two keys at once. In the past, when we mostly sat to use our devices, this one-to-one -one mapping made sense. But now we're living in an era of small hardware and big mobility, where devices with a smaller footprint really help us function. Phone keyboards kept this one-to-one -one mapping of computers and typewriters. They just shrunk the button size and kind of now rely on autocorrect to reduce typos. But if you're like me, you might be wondering if a one-to-one -one mapping is still useful in this world of small devices. I mean, what about the one-to-many mapping we see on the piano? Playing chords can give us the same number of outputs in a smaller, more wearable footprint that we can actually take on the go. I'm not the first person to have this idea. In fact, the keyboard and mouse were born with a third sibling, a one-to-many five-key panel called the corded key set. This is a concept built for one-handed entry. It was meant to be used for left-handed entry while your right hand was on the mouse so that you could click something and then immediately enter a key command with your left hand. The first corded key set used a binary system where each finger represented a one or a zero. With numbers assigned to letters, you could easily enter any letter in the alphabet with chords left to spare. Not too hard to learn once you got the hang of it. Although researchers frequently use corded key sets, Apple decided to cut it out of their consumer model, choosing only the mouse and the keyboard. And so, we all forgot that this potentially very useful tool existed. These days, we need easier one-handed entry that we can wear and take on the go. So I'm going to revive the corded key set right now with easily accessible and cheap materials. This prototype, which I call Soto, is mobile and Bluetooth enabled, making it possible to use for one-handed entry on my phone or computer. I'm also going to add another dimension, haptic reading. Small vibration motors on each of your fingers can send text to you haptically using the same system that you're using to write. So here's how it works. It sits here on my hand and I can type to my phone with it so we can send a text. And while we're at it, we can even do a little light reading. It's actually pretty silent, but it's going. This is a pretty basic prototype, and the code I wrote is very simple. Letters, numbers, backspace, and send. But Adafruit's BLD library allows for all kinds of commands and formats. You can imitate a keyboard, a mouse, or even a gamepad. I plan to eventually build a partial soda for my right hand that hooks up to the one on my left so I can use the same read-write methods but swap out the binary format for a braille writer format. I'm putting up code, instructions, and a video so that you can make your own, hack it together, change things, and go crazy. Have fun! For more DIY electronics and design, check out the website. Learn to hack pretty much anything at hackpretty.com.